Fake Windows 10 upgrade ransomware, Thunderstrike 2 Mac hack, new Tor attack, and are the US courts actually helping the victims of identity theft? All that and more coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. It's a hot and miserable Monday morning here in Richmond, California. I'm Patrick Norton, and this is ThreatWire for August 3rd, 2015, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. A huge thanks to everyone watching the show three times a week and supporting us. Oh my goodness, let's fire it up. We've talked lots about Windows 10 security in the last week, but the nastiest thing so far, I think, is a series of phishing emails pretending to be Microsoft sending you an upgrade link. If you download and install the upgrade link, hint, it's fake. It turns out to be CTB Locker ransomware that encrypts your drive and then tells you you're going to lose your data if you don't pay us, like now. The screenshots you see came from the Cisco blog, and please, don't download anything linked from an email, okay? Ars Techni reports that a new attack on the Tor privacy network can, quote, de-anonymize Tor with 88% accuracy, unquote. Sounds pretty serious, right? Researchers from MIT and the Qatar Computing Research Institute told Ars, our goal is to show that it is possible for a local passive adversary to de-anonymize users with hidden service activities without the need to perform end-to-end -end traffic analysis. So the hack doesn't actually involve decrypting Tor traffic, but developing fingerprints that allow an attacker running a guard, that's the entry point to Tor, to identify traffic patterns going through the guard. Tor project leader Roger Dingledine told ours that the requirements of the attack greatly limited its effectiveness in real world settings, mostly because they'd have to be running a lot of the randomly assigned entry guard machines to have a chance of someone logging in through a guard they controlled. And that it wouldn't actually be hard to spoof the mechanisms used for fingerprinting traffic, which I suspect means we can see an upgrade to Tor in the near future. And good news for anybody that's had personal information stolen in a data breach, ZDNet reports that the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit reversed a lower court decision that tossed out a class action lawsuit uh, over a 2014 data breach at Neiman Marcus, uh, echoing actually a recent decision by the Ninth District. The uh, judges in question claimed the victims had, quote, standing a right to file a lawsuit in federal court over concerns of ongoing problems. Yeah, data theft, ongoing problem, insecure networks ongoing problem. One, I smell Supreme Court. This one's going to get fought to the top because nobody wants to hold the bag over their poorly secured networks. Two, it'd be nice if security got really serious in the wake of lawsuits like this. And three, now if the courts could just convince the OPM that they need to take security seriously as of two years ago. Ow. You ever wonder how much is your stolen identity actually worth? Well, after research on the darknet search engine Grams, Quartz says probably around 20 bucks. That was the medium price for foals with like ID numbers, name, and address. Foals uh, containing credit scores uh, made for higher prices. For the very best credit scores, say 720 and above, you can net several hundreds of dollars for that information. That said, I suspect that $20 median is pretty high. Most ID sales are in bulk and fairly secretive and not out there on the dark web. And in pre-Black Hat and Defcon news, Kapersky's ThreatPost.com says that Thunderstrike 2 is coming. That's a fresh take on the Thunderstrike Mac OS X firmware boot kit, as in undetectable installation of malicious firmware that survives reboots and operating system reinstallations. That's going to be dropped in the Black Hat Security Conference this week. Researchers told ThreatPost, quote, Thunderstrike 2 is different from its predecessor in that an attacker would not require physical access to a MacBook. This attack can be accomplished remotely and exploits self-replicate via peripherals. Watch out, OS X. It's coming. Speaking of Black Hat, the whole Hack 5 crew are going to be at DEF CON later this week. I'll be alongside Darren and Snubs selling Land Turtles and other Hack 5 shop gear in the vendor area. And before I go, I want to give a huge thanks to everyone who supported the show so far on Patreon.com slash ThreatWire. If you find value from this and can spare a few cents an episode, please consider becoming a patron at Patreon.com slash ThreatWire. We may even feature your adorable fur babies like these ones in the next episode. They're just that cute, people. I hope you'll contribute to help us keep this coming completely independent and ad-free. If you can't donate, a like, a share, and a subscribe go a long way, too. You can find all our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute over at ThreatWire.net. With that, I'm Patrick Norton, and I'll see you on the Internet.